friends, it's Amanda here from Fun Hands On Learning. And today I'm gonna to show you eight activities to teach telling time to kids. We're gonna be doing um, telling to the hour, to the half hour, and to the quarter hour in some of these activities. These activities come from my early learners math curriculum and I want to tell you I'm super excited because this is the very last unit of my early learners math curriculum. So that means my curriculum is finished. If you already own my curriculum, you can go download these activities for free. Everything is there for you. The um, teacher's guides and the interactive worksheets and then all of these activities and everything else. So um, I will leave links below where you can check it out. Also, if you don't have my curriculum, that's fine. And you wanna get, let's just say maybe one activity that I'm gonna show you today. I have, uh, all of these activities are on my website where you can get them just single um, downloads, just one at a time if uh, you prefer. Um, or you can get the whole curriculum, like I said. So anyways, I just wanted to mention that because I'm super excited that the curriculum is complete. All 11 units are done and you can check them out. All right, so let's get into these activities. So the first one I'm gonna show you is called Roll and Cover the Time. And it has, there are two different mats. So the first mat looks like this. And there's another mat that looks like this. So one has a little boy and one has a little girl. And then there are two dice. So I wanted to show you one of the dice I completed and put together and the other one I didn't. So when you um, print it out, it's gonna look like this. And I wanted to say that what I do is um, after I cut it out, well, I laminate it. So you can see I laminated it. So first thing I do is laminate it. Then when I cut it out, I fold on the dotted lines and then um, I fold down the um, little, I don't know what you call these, little flaps, obviously. And then I just use clear tape to tape mine. So I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but I just use a, like, a piece of clear tape to tape mine. Um, some people glue it, but I found that a lot of times glue doesn't stick very well. So I just use a you know clear piece of scotch tape and I tape all the sides together really good. Okay, so um, there are two dice. This one I have completed and then this one um, obviously is how it comes. So I still have to do that. So one die goes with one side and then the other die goes with the other side. So you just have to choose which side you want your students to do. Um, it's basically the same thing, either side you choose. And then you just need some manipulatives. I have some examples. I pulled out some manipulatives that almost all teachers or parents probably have around their house. You probably all have these snap cubes, so you could use snap cubes for this activity. Um, a lot of teachers or moms might have these counting bears. Um, oh, sorry, you couldn't see that. These counting bears, um, you can get these off Amazon. Um, you could get snap cubes off Amazon. You could probably get all this stuff off Amazon. And the other one I pulled out are just some pom-poms that I had glued magnets to the back of um, because we use these ones a lot too and they're really cheap. So if you you know don't have the money to invest in um, these kind of manipulatives, um, pom-poms are super cheap. At, you, know, you can get a bag of them at the dollar store or at any, any craft store and then just get some magnets and glue them to the bottom. And then the reason we have the magnets there is because we like to use them a lot on cookie sheets, but also having the magnets on the bottom makes it so that they don't move around and there's a flat surface when you're putting them down on your um, activities. So, okay, so this die goes with this mat, and so I'm going to roll the die, and I got nine o'clock. So then the child would have to look at their mat and cover up a, a clock that says nine o'clock. I see one right here. So just use any manipulative that they have, and they're going to cover it up. And they're just going to keep on going until their entire mat is covered up. So now I got 11 o'clock. I have to look around and find one that has 11 o'clock and then go ahead and cover it up. I see one right here. Okay, so um, this activity works with to the half hour and to the hour. This next activity is called Tell Meow the Time. And the reason I have it say that is because it has a kitty cat on it. And let me pull them out. Um, so you get cards that look like this with the cat on it. It says Tell Meow the Time. And then um, you have cards that have the fish that you're supposed to feed to the cat. So what the kids are gonna do is they're gonna take a card. So here, I'll take this card. It says, they look at the clock, it says 7.15, and then they have to find the matching card that, that says 7.15 and match it to their um, cat card. 
so that they can feed the cat the correct time. This would be a great activity to do in a pocket chart. So if you happen to have a pocket chart, you can see how you can just place the card right in the pocket chart and then the kids just have to match up the time. So this one says nine o'clock, so they would just take their card and match it right there. So you can do this on a table or on a pocket chart either way and it works just fine. So this one is working with telling time to the hour, the half hour, and the quarter hour. So the last activity I showed you have had a cat theme. This activity has a dog theme. This one is called Telling Time Watchdog. So um, I kind of came off the theme of a watchdog, you know, who watches your house, um, or a watch that you wear on your wrist. Okay, so you get the idea. All right, so this activity comes with a watch dog and he has a clock on, he has a, an analog clock. And I'm gonna erase on here because I already wrote on him. Okay, and then it comes with these um, cards that have different watches on them with different times. So this activity is gonna work with telling time to the half hour and to the hour. And so what the kids are going to do is they're going to take a card and this one says two o'clock and then they have to make the time on their watchdog. So I know my minute hand is going to be at the 12 and my hour hand is going to be at the two. I want to make sure that, that you remind the kids that the hour hand is the little one and the minute hand is the longer one. If um, you're interested and you already have my curriculum, you know that it comes with reference charts and there are reference charts that help you teach the child about the hour hand, so the, um, the minute and the, and the hour hand. <laughs> so um, yeah, check that out too, that's part of the curriculum. But anyways, for this one, you can have them um, draw the arrows if you want or they can just draw the lines, but making sure that they're making their um, hour hands smaller and their minute hands longer. And then it will of course be a little bit more difficult when they go to, to make their 130. I'm using a dry erase marker because I have laminated my watch dog here. And so um, when they go to make 130, you, need to, you want to remind the students, obviously, that they need to be halfway between one and two. So it hasn't gotten to the two yet, so it's halfway, the hour hand is halfway between one and two. Oh, and of course their minute hand is going to be at the six. And I also have reference charts in my curriculum that help the students count. Um, there's a reference chart on there that helps the students count by fives so that they can remember that it's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on. Okay, the next activity is just some telling time puzzles. I have some um, little puzzles here. Some of them are telling time to the hour, half hour, and quarter hour, and they just have to match them up. You've seen things like this before where they have the analog clock and the digital clock and they're just matching up analog times to digital times. This next activity is probably my favorite one. This one is called Make the Time with Dough and Pipe Cleaners. And so this activity, you just need some pipe cleaners and you need to cut them into little pieces. You need two, oops, you need two different colors. So you're gonna make one color is going to be your hour hand and one color is going to be your minute hand. So you wanna make sure when you give it to the kids, I'm gonna show you here. Okay, I'm gonna put these pieces away. You wanna make sure when you give it to the kids that the hour hand is a little bit longer and your minute hand, you've cut your minute hand pieces a little bit shorter. Okay, so my blue one here is gonna be my hour hand and my, did I say that wrong? My blue one is gonna be my hour hand, it's gonna be shorter, and my um, green one here is gonna be my minute hand, it's gonna be longer. If I said it incorrect, I've just corrected myself there. Okay, then you just need a little bit of Play-Doh or you know, any kind of dough. All right, the kids are going to take a card, so let me just, Let's just do an easy one for now to kind of show you. Okay, I'm gonna take this card and there's lots and lots of cards that come with it. Actually, every single hour and half hour comes in this pack, okay? Um, you wanna cut the cards like I have here. They're gonna take a card and they're gonna put a little piece of dough in the middle. That's actually probably too much. A little piece of dough in the middle and then they're going to use the pipe cleaners as their hands and they have to make the time that the card says. So this card says two o'clock so I'm gonna kind of push my dough down. I had my five-year-old doing this the other day and um, he had fun. Okay, so two o'clock, so I know my hour hand is going to be pointing at the 12, so they're gonna put their hour hand in there, pointing it at the 12. And then I'm gonna make sure my 
Why do I keep saying our hand? My minute hand is going to be pointing at the 12. Goodness gracious. And my hour hand then is going to be pointing at the two. All right, there we go. Now I have made two o'clock. So this activity I like because it uses their fine motor skills with their fingers. It's hands-on and they enjoy it because it's fun, but then they're also um, practicing telling time. So, okay, so that one, that card is done and then I can go on to my next card. And then when I, we're all complete and we've done a bunch of the different cards then we take them out and, you know, clean up and put it away. And since I have these laminated, the dough should just come right off and shouldn't leave any kind of marks or anything like that. So I think this is my favorite activity just because, you know me, I love the hands-on. <laughs> um, and so this one definitely is fun using the different manipulatives. This activity is spin and cover with dough. So you need Play-Doh for this activity again as well. So I'm gonna open that up. And it comes with four different mats. This mat works on time to the hour, half hour, and quarter hour. And then it also has mats that work just for hour and half hour. This one is hour and quarter hour and half hour. And then this one is half hour, hour, half hour and hour. Okay, this is the mat I'm gonna show you. And I'm sorry, my phone was going off. You could hear it in the background. Um, so what you need is either a spinner like I have here. I got these spinners off Amazon for a couple of dollars for a pack of eight of them, I think it was. Um, and we just reuse them for different activities. And I actually decided, I started attaching them with um, tape. So I just put a little piece of tape underneath. Here, I'll show you a little bit of tape underneath and they actually stay pretty good if you if you push them down and then that way I can reuse them on different activities and I don't have to I used to cut a hole and then I would attach them um, but then I could only use it for that activity and that was it now I can just keep on reusing them as long as I tape it pretty good um, it, it tends to stay as long as the kids aren't real rough on it. Okay, otherwise you can just use a pencil and a paper clip. You hold the pencil and then you just fling the paper clip and it works just the same way. Okay, so what they're going to do is they're going to spin and then um, whatever it lands on, so mine landed on 515. I'm gonna look over here at the dough clocks here and I'm gonna try to find one that says 515 and I see one right here. So what you wanna do is you wanna have the kids roll the dough into balls like this and then they're just gonna cover up once they find one that says that time. Then we're gonna keep on going. Now one thing you can do with this activity is if they do roll Okay, so I rolled 5.30. If they do roll, let's say 5.15 again, and they've covered up all their 5.15s, although here's one, so I would cover that up if I did. But if they do roll them all again, you can just have them smash it. So let's say all my 5.15s are covered up and I rolled five, or I spun 5.15 again, then the second time around I can go ahead and just smash it. And I don't know, it's just a more of a fun, um, something else fun that you can add to it since we're using dough to cover up our answers. But anyways, the real way you're supposed to play it is just to keep spinning um, until all of your uh, clocks are covered, okay? This next activity isn't necessarily um, telling time, but it is differentiating between AM and PM, which is another skill that kids need to know. Um, they need to be able to differentiate. So um, I also have a reference chart that teaches the kids um, the difference between AM and PM in my curriculum. Okay, but for this activity, what they're gonna do is they're gonna have these cards and they just have to sort. So this is the sorting mat, it says day and night, AM, PM. And then they just um, look at the court card, <laughs> take a card, they look at it and they decide which mat it goes on. So this one says clean up my toys. Well, if I've already played with them and I'm cleaning them up, it must be evening time or nighttime, PM. Put on my pajamas, PM. Get dressed, that would be AM. Okay, so they're just gonna go ahead and sort all of the cards into the correct category. Uh, swing on the swings, I'm gonna do that in the AM. School, we do school in the AM. So just a way to, you know, sort, there's lots of them. Just a way for the kids to practice, what are some of the things that you would do in the AM and the PM so they can understand the difference between daytime and nighttime. Okay, the last activity here is time match and cover and comes with lots and lots of strips like, that look like this, cards that look like this. 
and I don't know if you would call them cards or strips of paper, whatever you want to call them. Um, and what they do is they just take one, so I'll just put this one in front of us, and they look at the clock, uh, the digital time that the child has. This one says six o'clock. They're going to cover up all of the analog clocks on their card that match the digital clock. So I'm going to use these manipulatives here, and I'm going to look at the first one. That says 6.30, so that's not going to be covered up. So I'm just going to cover up all the ones that say 6 o'clock. All right, and that, that card is finished, and I can go on to my next card. So these ones work on time to the hour and to the half hour. So I should just show you what some of the cards look like. And obviously, again, whoop, you can use any kind of manipulative you have laying around the house to practice. So these are just the fun hands-on activities that are part of this unit. There are also some worksheet, interactive worksheets, and there's also reference charts, as I mentioned, and there's a teacher's guide, and there is an assessment test for each unit as well. So this was unit 11, the last unit in my early learner's math curriculum. I'll leave links below to everything. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this gave you some ideas on how to make um, teaching telling time a little bit more interactive and fun for your kiddos, and we'll see you next time. Bye!